Hey everyone, so update. I am now to page 300 on uh, the chamber. Wow, okay. <laughs> so you, they took a trip to their hometown and, or well, the hometown of Clanton where um, a lot of things happen. I don't think, I think Clanton was different. I'm pretty sure it was different. I forgot. It was Greenville, I think was the town where the actual bombing happened but we found out about another crime and that the daughter witnessed and has blamed her dad uh, for a lot of um, psychological problems that she's had because of s witnessing it it's horrible it was for zero reason and yeah <laughs> I don't know I know now the grandson's questioning whether or not he wants to actually try and help his grandfather anymore um, because of just the awful things he has done that um, just for no reason really except for hatred and stuff so there's that. That's a, that's a problem that's going on right now um, in this book. And time is running out. Currently he has like two weeks left to live um, for the appeal. And the governor is possibly going to petition or pardon him. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Um, I'm sure we'll get a lot more courtroom scene right, coming up. But it's a lot of family drama uh, more than anything right now so it's pretty good i'm enjoying it kind of um, when it's not painting a light on uh, well painting a bad light on southerners um because i'm a southern myself and um not all of us are racist terrible people um but during this time most of us were um, but not all of us, especially during now with, um, more, ex being more accepting and not just awful people, basically. So, all right, that's it. All right, I'll talk to y'all sometime later. Okay, so I'm finishing up this and it just got interesting because now the third party the third accomplice has shown up and it's kind of confirmed <laughs> that he did kill off the other accomplice um, in the book and he's trying to keep Sam from spilling spilling the beans so we'll see where this goes okay I know I just did an update but I just read a sentence that says um, talking about his aunt. Uh, she was fragile and sick, and she needed his strong voice and broad shoulders. What? What? <laughs> okay. She needed his strong voice and broad shoulders. All you need from a man is his... When you're sick and fragile, apparently totally can see this was written by a man obviously i don't even know when this book published oh i think i just lost my place okay i'm on chapter 35 i'm the beginning of chapter 35 when was this published oh i probably should check the first few pages instead of the cover uh let's see this was published Nineteen ninety four. Product of its time, definitely. Alright, I'll talk to you. Hi everyone. So I wanted to film this part before I um get too far in the book and find out. Um so this is gonna be kind of reaction of like a before and after kind of thing. So I think that Lee, who is the aunt of 
our main character, Adam, and the daughter of um, Sam, who is the one that Adam's trying to save. Um, I think she's been kidnapped by the third party who is only known by Wedge. Um, he had done it before, and it's pretty clear he had done it before, and I think, I don't know if Lee's dead, but I had, she's gone missing, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I think she's been kidnapped by Wedge, and I think Wedge just might have screwed up big time by doing so, because... Um, he had done it before, and people are starting to kind of connect these dots, but they're not exactly connecting it just yet, but they're seeing that there's something going on with the fact that when, um, Sam was on trial, um, last time, and Dogen, who was the set, who was, um, testifying against, um, Sam in the trial, which made Sam get on death row, and then eventually Dogen and his wife's house got blown up, and their son had gotten missing during the time of the trial, so a lot of people speculated, well, the governor, who is the most important person in saving Sam, um, is kind of made that connection, too, so Sam's made, or, uh, the governor, who I forgot his name, the governor's made the, that connection. Adam's kind of made that connection because Adam and the governor had that conversation about it earlier. And I think that Sam could eventually also make that connection if he finds out that Lee's missing and nobody knows where Lee is. Um, so I think once Sam finds out that Lee is missing that's when everything's going to snap shut and this is when it's they're going to attack in on wedge which will be the most satisfying thing of this book so i'm hoping <laughs> i'm hoping i'm hoping lee's going to be okay and i hope that sam um doesn't die on death row, and I hope that Wedge gets brought to justice. These are the hopes of the last 100 pages in this book. Okay, I will continue reading. Next update is probably going to be some freaking out. I just wanted to get this out of my mouth and, and on, on the record. Before I got too far and find out what what's going on, what's happened with Lee, um, nobody's freaking out because she was drunk and she's gone missing and come back before. But I think that Wedge has kidnapped her. So we'll. See. Good morning, everyone. I am almost finished with this book. Um, I have like. I don't know, 30 something pages left in this book. Um, and wow, is it, is it heating up in these last few pages? Last few chapters. Oh, it's so good. I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm like, <sighs> is it gonna come? Is it, is it, he's, is he going to get off of death row? Cause right now it feels like he's not. So, we still don't know about Lee. We, um, I still think Wedge has kidnapped her. So, we'll see. And I'm hoping there's some conclusion to that. And I hope Lee is okay. Um, yeah. Possibly next time I update, I'll be finished with this book. Unless I'm just, like, dying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. So it's been a couple of days since I finished The Chamber by John Grisham. What are my final thoughts? I about cried in the end. I cared more about um, 
Sam than I really thought I was. I am really disappointed with the Lee storyline because come find out she is just at a mental hospital and you, or rehab, not mental hospital. She's at rehab and you're sitting here and you're like, you could have had an interesting thing there. You had little nuggets of, like, really interesting things there with the third third guy, and you just squandered it. Like, you had this really, really, really interesting, like, ooh, what if she was kidnapped by this, by Wedge? And she wasn't. And it was just like, what? What? You just, you had something interesting. And you just, poof. Bye-bye. Okay, John. Sorry. <laughs> could've, could've, you know, turned out to be more interesting. Like, just, oh, the, the least storyline was just thrown out the window. Wasn't needed. It just got thrown out. I was like, John! John. John. John, listen. Listen. If I could change this book, I would have had Lee kidnap. <laughs> I love a good kidnapping story. Alright. Alright. Um, back to it. I liked Adam and I liked Sam a lot more than I thought I was. Um, so the two main characters we have, Sam and Adam, was very interesting. Um, yes, Sam did some awful, awful things. And maybe I'm a bit more sympathetic because I'm in the South. But I'm not saying that racism is right because it's not. I'm not it's not right. And I don't think that Sam was actually fully racist. Yes, he was a part of the Ku Klux Klan. But when you look at the fact that like his whole family was a part of the Ku Klux Klan and it was just natural and like there probably would have been some serious consequences for Sam if he did not join. And, I mean, some of the deaths, like, the guy that killed his father, I understand that. Um, and just, like, this mob mentality of, like, I understand of, like, just going with it and feeling like you have to go with it. There was one death where, and, well, Joe, Joe was obviously I think I think Sam had a problem with killing I think that he enjoyed killing too much and he knew when he could get away with it I think he's justified some things in his mind of deaths and he's just he has a problem and he wants I he definitely deserved to stay in jail. He's a terror he was it he it's a whole man who has regretted all the things that he has done. He probably was racist at one point. And hearing and growing up in this kind of situation I think having a kid like Eddie really changed his perspective because Eddie wasn't racist. Eddie grew up in the same kind of attitude, except it was more of the civil rights movement that he grew up in. So he was more open to African Americans and less open to racism because his best friend was an African American. And I think Sam having a kid like Eddie and a kid like Lee really changed his perspective 
of race um and having someone like the link the family like the lincolns in his in their lives so much i think it really changed his perspective yes he did some awful things yes he took part in some awful things i think by the end of it sam cahill cahill is a man with a lot of regret whether so i i don't think he should have died by the end of it for his crime that he was convicted of he was not convicted of any other crime for the crime that he was convicted of he has stated he it was not meant to be murdered so i'm it it was going to be an intent or a manslaughter, which also there's terrorism with the bomb and everything, but there might be a manslaughter charge there instead of a, I don't remember, it's first or second degree murder. He was charged with murder. So, I, I just, I don't think that murder was the correct and I wish he had I think if he had just brought that up in the court that it was when the bomb was supposed to go now yes terrorism yes manslaughter but that's I don't think the well maybe terrorism but manslaughter or uh manslaughter definitely is a, a charge on for death penalty i think going for the non-guilty kind of thing kind of just they should have gone with a different verdict you know what i mean it's a non-guilty like I think they had too much trust that he was going to get out of it and actually ended up in death row because they wouldn't do a more, a different perspective, different approach to everything. So, yeah. Um, I cared a lot more about Sam by the end of it I didn't think I was um and he denounced I, I just I think he regret I think a man with a lot of regrets I think he actually I just yeah I'm not gonna spoil the ending but wow <laughs> I, I was in tears by the end of uh, the book, and whether you want to take that as a grain of salt of happy or sad, that's up to you. Um, I don't have, I was going to do book vlog for all the books that I've read, read um, but I read I Owe You One in two days, um, really more than, more like one and a half. So, I, and I read a lot of that in school, so I wasn't able to, like, vlog. Um, so, I finished that, and that was a good book. I have a lot of thoughts, um, being that, and I may just put, I did a live thing where I ranted about it for, like, five or six minutes, so I may put that in this video as well. Um, just kind of show you my thoughts. So, um, if it- Reflection, I finished I owe you one, which was my fourth pick for, for, um, I'll call her back. Sorry. Actually, guys, I'm going to have to call, take this call. So, I'll be back. Ah, uh, okay. Am I still live? Or is it? still live i think it's live okay 
I'm sorry guys. I had my mom just called about dinner. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, back to it. So I finished I owe you one, which was my fourth pick um of my jar. I only have two two picks left. Um so I will give a review. So right now my Goodreads says four stars on this, but it's more really three point five stars. Um because of things, but it's not you can't give 0.5 stars on Goodreads. So, um, so it's, it's kind of a toss up between four and three stars, but on the Goodreads, but I felt like this was a higher 3.5 than, um, than like lower three. So I gave it a four on Goodreads, but it's more really a 3.5 in my opinion. Um, because 95% of these characters in this book, main characters, um, are awful. They are the worst. And for 95% of the book, or more, they are awful. Like, so this book's about Fixie, Fixie Farr, and her family owns a grocery store. Or really, yeah, well, sh grocery store. And, um... So, her dad died the year before, and her mom is stepping back from the business and letting the kids take over. And she's on vacation for right now because she really needs to, needed this vacation. So, the kids are taking over, but her siblings do not give a crap about the business and are trying to change it into something that's not. And they are awful, both of them. So, there is Jake who is just a narcissistic a-hole the entire time, except for like 3% of the book, or less than this book. And then there's Nicole, who is just a selfish a-hole the entire book. Selfish, incompetent a-hole for the entire book. Pretty much, 95%. I'd say for her, because there's, like, this small portion where she actually cares about her brother and cares about what's going on um, and actually learns how to do stuff because she can't even do, like, the smallest of things. And she's selfish through this entire book. Like, she doesn't give a crap about other people. She's like, I need to do self-care. I'm like, girl, yes, self-care is important, but... Like, you don't care about other people. You have a husband, and, like, you don't even care about him. Like, it, oh, she's the worst, Nicole. And then there's Ryan. Oh, oh, Ryan. Who does he, like, doesn't have a redemption by the end of this point? He doesn't, like, we don't care. He's so terrible. And then there's Uncle uh, Ned, who's a misogynistic jerk. Ooh. Aunt Karen's just annoying. The side characters can get pretty annoying, too. And then there's Fixie, who, the main character of this book, who you just want to, like, smack over the head sometimes and be like, girl, be selfish. And stand up for yourself. Be selfish. You know what's right for this business. Lay into them. And it's just, she gets frustrated. And then there's Sebastian, who has a girlfriend in the beginning of this book, breaks up with his girlfriend, and then gets with Fixie. Uh -huh. I like Sebastian, though. The one character who surprised me this, this entire story is Layla, who is Jake's girlfriend. And, oh my gosh, who keeps calling me? Stop. Okay. There's Layla, who... It's, she... She... I really thought she was going to be this incompetent girl who is only in it for the money. She isn't. She stays with Jake through this entire story of, like, hardship and everything. And, like... Girl, you are wise, and you just, you, I think she sells herself short. And I'm just like, girl, 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 do not sell yourself short. You are wise. Like, oh my goodness. I thought she was just going to be this 
incompetent, annoying care either incompetent and annoying or incompetent and an a hole <laughs> through this entire story. She wasn't. Huh, she wasn't even incompetent. Oh my goodness. She was the shining. She was the shining light in this book. Because I, I didn't get frustrated with her. She's the only character I wasn't frustrated with. Anyways, that's all I can say without really giving away spoilers. Um, so why is there three in here? Oh, I owe you one's also in here. I gotta take that one out. Okay, so there's two books in here. One of them, oh, one of them's an arc, and the other one I don't own. <laughs> Um, but I can get on Libby, so I'm kind of wanting, kind of wanting my arc. I kind of want to start my arc. Okay, because the other one can, the other one can wait as much as I, okay, what is this one? So that was the thoughts about the um, I owe you one. So uh, my and if I had done it, um, showed off what my next book I'm reading is, and this will be a book uh, vlog, and that is the God Game by Danny Toby. It's an art that I received. It is coming out next year, January seventh. Um, and I'll, I'll read the back for you, for people who haven't seen other vlogs. So, and I might get a little bit more hype on this vlog, because Macmillan sent it to me. Alright, so here's what the back says. You are invited. Come inside and play with G-O-D. Bring your friends. It's fun. But remember the rules. When and all, when and all your dreams come true, lose, you die. With those words, Charlie and his friends enter a video game controlled by a mysterious AI that believes it's God. Through their phone screens and high-tech glasses, the teens' realities blur with a virtual world of creeping vines and mythical creatures. When they accomplish a mission, the game rewards them with expensive tech, revenge on high school tormentors, and cash flowing for ATMs. But then the threatening messages start. Worship me. Obey me. Complete a mission, however cruel, where the game reveals their secrets and crushes their dreams. And what of the game's first promise? Win. Win big. Lose. You die. And I've started some of it, and I'll, I'll even add some early thoughts. Um, it sounds like a creepypasta in the very beginning of like, ooh, this is... A thing that uh, thinks it's God, you're talking to God, God, and well, it's kind of cool, it's kind of creepy so far. So, and you were already getting some hot tea affairs, and uh, family's going bankrupt. So, I'm ready for the tea, and I will be spilling it for you in the next.